Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Probably the most famous bowl game in all of college football and one of the most notable American sporting events of the year. When we think of the Rose Bowl, we think of exciting games between some of the best teams in the country, the spectacles that surround the game, such as the Tournament of Roses Parade, and the scenic venue in sunny Southern California. But what if I told you that, once upon a time, the Rose Bowl was held all the way on the other side of the country in Durham, North Carolina? In December of 1941, the United States of America had just been shaken to its core following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor that occurred on December 7th, an event that launched the country into World War II. The American population, particularly on the West Coast, were scared that this may not have been a one-off attack. As a result, the U.S. government would ban all large public gatherings on the West Coast. Of course, this included the Rose Bowl, a game which consistently held nearly 100,000 people inside the stadium not to mention the hundreds of thousands more that attended the Rose Bowl Parade. So what was going to happen to the big game? Well, let's take a look at the two teams that have been selected to play in the game. The Oregon State Beavers were champions of the Pacific Coast Conference that year, and thus earned an invitation to the game. Their opponents were the second-rate Duke Blue Devils, who, believe it or not, used to be a football powerhouse. Oregon State was unable to host the game, because of its location on the West Coast. But the Blue Devils invited the Beavers to play the game in their home stadium, Duke Stadium, in Durham, North Carolina. The Beavers accepted this invitation on December 16th, and the game was set for New Year's Day of 1942. While Duke would play the game from the comfort of their home campus, they had to make certain preparations to host the Rose Bowl. At the time, Duke Stadium could hold up to 35,000 people, making it the second largest stadium in the South. However, that would not be enough for such a big event, so they borrowed some seating from their good friends at UNC and NC State, who gave them bleachers from Keenan Stadium and Riddick Stadium, respectively. This brought the capacity up to 56,000 seats, and all 56,000 tickets were sold in just three days. As for Oregon State, they had their own set of challenges, with having to travel all the way across the country. On December 19th, just three days after receiving the invitation from Duke, Beavers departed Corvallis, Oregon, and set out for North Carolina via train. However, one notable player was missing from the trip. Jack Yoshihara, a sophomore on the team who arrived in America from Japan at the age of three, was not allowed to travel with the team to the game, despite the protests of students, teammates, and coaches. While his teammates traveled across the country, Yoshihara was sent to a Japanese-American internment camp in Idaho. After three days on the train, the Beavers stopped in Chicago to get a practice in at Stagg Field at the University of Chicago. As their own uniforms and equipment hadn't yet arrived, the team borrowed uniforms from the defunct University of Chicago program and ran a light practice. Their next stop was in Washington, D.C., where they had a practice at Griffith Stadium, which was the home to the NFL's Washington Redskins and the MLB's Washington Senators at the time. Finally, after a journey of five days and about 3,000 miles, Beavers arrived in Durham on December 24th. Going into the game, Duke was expected to win by at least two touchdowns, which made some people wonder why Oregon State would make the journey across the country just to get handily defeated. One of the NBC announcers who called the game, Bill Stern, remarked that Duke could win the game just by throwing 11 helmets on the field. The Beavers heard this remark and became motivated to prove him wrong. Finally, all the talk was set aside at game time on a chilly and rainy day in Durham. Oregon State's Donald Durden opened the scoring in the first quarter with a 15-yard rushing touchdown. Duke evened the score in the second quarter with a Steve Latch rushing touchdown, and the teams went into halftime tied at 7-7. At the break, while Oregon State head coach Lon Steiner was giving a halftime speech, he was interrupted by an intoxicated fan who had stumbled into the Beavers locker room looking to urinate. Day classy of college football. In the third quarter, the Beavers scored a touchdown when quarterback Bob Deathman found George Zellick for a 31-yard strike. However, the Blue Devils quickly responded, capping a long drive with a one-yard rushing touchdown from Winston Siegfried. Right before the third quarter ended, 
Deathman found Gene Gray for a 68-yard touchdown pass, which became the longest passing touchdown in the history of the Rose Bowl to that point. The extra point, though, no good, making the score 2014 to three quarters. While the Blue Devils' offense made multiple attempts to regain the lead, the Beavers shut them down, recording two interceptions in the fourth quarter. Duke tacked on two points in the fourth quarter by recording a safety, but that would be all the scoring in the game. The game ended with the Beavers intercepting the Blue Devils in the last play to seal a 20 16 win. The guy who made the winning defensive play? None other than quarterback Bob Duffman. On their way back to Gorvallis, the Oregon State train made a stop in Pasadena, California to visit the Rose Bowl itself. All in all, the Beavers had traveled over 7,000 miles across 24 states. In the following months, most of the players on both teams enlisted in the military and went to fight in World War II. Even Duke coach Wallace Wade enlisted at 50 years of age. There were a couple interesting stories that have come out from the players' time at war. For one, Duke backup quarterback Charlie Haynes and Oregon State left guard Frank Parker became rifle platoon leaders in different companies and recognized each other while sailing from Africa to Italy in 1944. Later, Parker found Haynes severely wounded in Italy and carried him back to an abandoned farmhouse for medical treatment. This heroic act probably saved Haynes' life. Tragically, several players on both teams would be killed in action in World War II in both the European and Pacific theaters. If I'm not mistaken, when this video is being made, only one player from the 1942 Rose Bowl survives, Oregon State's Andy Landforce, who is still with us at 105 years old. For many years, the 1942 Rose Bowl was the only time in which the Rose Bowl game was played outside of the Rose Bowl Stadium. In 2021, though, the game was once again moved, this time to AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, for reasons related to COVID-19. I hope you've enjoyed this video and have learned something new about college football and American history in general. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like to support the channel. I'm planning on making some future videos like this, so feel free to leave a comment about any ideas you may have. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.